37 scientists at NASA are always trying to learn more about outer space. Thanks to observations from NASA, from a NASA telescope, astronomers are now closer to understanding one of the hardest to reach places in the universe, the inner core of a star on the verge of becoming a black hole. Katie Blake joins us in studio now to talk about a NASA scientist or actually chatted with a NASA scientist about it. Take it away, Katie. We are going straight to the source here. I get really excited to talk anything that has to do with NASA outer space, and we're going to the experts this morning. This telescope is called NICER, N-I-C-E-R, and it is at the International Space Station right now. Scientists use it to study neutron stars and objects that are about to collapse into black holes. NICER team member Paul Ray joins us live right now from Alexandria, Virginia. Uh, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Great to speak with you live here on GMSA at 9. We've got a few questions for you. First, what is the difference between a black hole and a neutron star? Sure, nice to be here. Yeah, the neutron stars and black holes are both collapsed stars that were formed uh, when really massive stars, much more massive than our sun, collapse. The most massive stars collapse all the way down to black holes because no force can impede their collapse. They collapse down to a point and they are enshrouded by an event horizon from which nothing, not even light, can escape. But neutron stars are from stars that are a little bit less massive. They collapse down until basically the atoms are the neutrons that are, make up atoms are crunched one up against each other like a giant atomic nucleus. They're about the size of a city, but they weigh more than our sun. And so just a teaspoon of them would weigh as much as Mount Everest. Wow. So why is it important that we study these neutron stars, learn more about them? Yeah, we're trying to understand them because they present one of the most extreme environments that we can see in the universe. They're extremely dense. They have super strong magnetic fields. They have these conditions that we can never create in a terrestrial laboratory. And with their densities at the core being twice that of a nucleus, there's physics that might go on there that we don't fully understand. And they give us a way to probe that. Uh, and that's what, so we're trying to understand that by looking at how squeezable those neutron stars are. So I'm sure that's a big reason why the telescope NICER is on the International Space Station right now, right? Yeah, so we, uh, neutron stars don't emit much light, and we have, so we see them in the X-ray band. Uh, and so in order to see X-rays, you have to go above the Earth's atmosphere, because thankfully for us, X-rays don't make it through the atmosphere. So we put NICER on the space station, where we have uh, abundant communication and power resources. It's a great place to be for our telescope. And from that vantage point, we can collect X-rays from all sorts of neutron stars and other objects in the sky. So what is next for this telescope NICER up there on the space station? Yeah, NICER is going to keep observing the primary sources, which are these neutron stars. But also, it, about half the time is given away to anyone in the world that wants to propose. It's an open telescope, and so it observes black holes and a variety of other exciting objects in the sky that emit X-rays. I know there's a lot of fascination around, around black holes there. They're very cool, awesome that we're learning even more about them and the neutron stars as well. So where can our viewers go to learn more about neutron stars and NICER, the telescope? Yeah, so definitely online, you can go to nasa.gov slash NICER. And there's a, a host of uh, really amazing videos and animations you can check out uh, about the neutron stars and black holes. And if you just follow at NASA Universe on Twitter or other social media, you'll be able to keep up with things as they come in. Awesome. Thank you so much for your time this morning, Paul. We really appreciate it. Appreciate it. You've taught us all a lot here in a very short amount of time. <laughs> My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Thank you. All right. Paul Ray, Katie Blake, thank you guys. I would make a joke about uh, astronomy, but I don't think we have space in this show. <laughs> That's all her. That's all her. That was well the joke, done. Oriana. Well played. That was the joke. <laughs> <laughs> Funny stuff. Did Oriana put you up to that? I have one more. I have one more. Okay. Um, why are astronauts so good at social distancing? Why? They like their space. That was <laughs> Not bad. Future dad jokes. 942, <laughs> about 68 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9.